You are listening to Level Up Your Gaming Podcast, Episode 30, Helping Your Players When They Are Lost. Today we talk about helping your players when they lose their way in your game. We discuss tools for setting them back on the path of your story and how to prepare for the unexpected. We discuss giving your players their win if they cleverly solve your problems. If you'd like to participate in the discussion or leave us feedback, you can contact us at levelupyourgamingpodcast at gmail.com. We have a lot of fun episodes coming up down the pipeline and an interview with another GM group coming up as well. So if you like the content and want to hear that interview and subscribe and we'll ensure you don't miss an episode. New episodes come out almost every Wednesday. Please also review, tell a friend about the podcast, or share with your gaming group. Now sit back and enjoy the episode. Welcome into the Level Up Your Gaming Podcast. My name is Aaron, and joining me on Zoom from his home, he'll guide you out of the forest when you are lost, Jared. Hey, everyone. How are you doing today, Jared? Not bad. You? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, it's been a it's been a relatively easy week so far, so I, I'm nice. I'm happy with all that. Uh, I know that the you, know, you you had your whole big drive back down from uh, from Georgia recently, but uh, we I got back from a vacation that I had in uh, in Alabama. I was visiting my brother my brother who lives down there, uh, and so I, I share your pain in terms of the length of the drive, just not on the same day that you did the drive. <laughs> yes. Yes, you do. It was funny though. Like, uh, I, I I had to take a rental car back, and they had Apple CarPlay. So, I have had I I've love used Apple that CarPlay. <laughs> love it. I've used it on a Toyota. It was great. Um, I, I I had their pickup truck, and I used that the entire time I was down in Georgia, and I and I absolutely loved it. This time I was using a GMC. That car could not use Apple CarPlay if its life depended on it. It was just like if I if I turned on my music, suddenly the GPS would forget where I was. Every time that I entered a major city, the GPS would just shut off. Just boop, done. I was like, this is when I need it, not when I have a stretch of like, please take this road straight for 192 miles. Like, that's when you can turn off, not when I'm in the <laughs> middle of freaking Nashville. <laughs> Turnoffs and shit, and I don't know which one I should be going to. It's got signs like this way to Chattanooga. Like, Chattanooga sounds, no, that's the other way. <laughs> Terrible. Awful. Just awful. Well, um, you made it back in one piece, so I guess I you, did. you figured I did. it out. <laughs> Slowly but surely. Actually, I did it pretty decent. Um, saw some cool stuff along the way. Saw a police felony stop. Um, where they had like pretty much, I think the entire police department out there, they had like eight cars and they, they blocked off the whole highway and we're all just sitting there. And I was, I was trying to get home to my baby and I just wanted to roll down the window and be like, shoot him already. Jesus, <laughs> just shoot him. <laughs> you know? So that was, that was interesting. And I saw a high speed pursuit, um, that was pretty cool because uh, this this Tennessee state trooper was right on a guy's ass, lights, sirens, and everything. This guy was not pulling over. <laughs> they were boom, boom. I was like, <laughs> All right. So saw a high speed pursuit in Tennessee. Saw a felony stop in Indiana. Uh, so interesting stuff along the way. But what's our topic for today? Uh, our topic for today is helping your players when they are lost. You mean when the GPS shuts off right before? When the GPS shuts, how apropos that your GPS shuts off right, right before we get to the uh, the, uh, you know, huh? the the exits. But uh, yes, when your GPS shuts off, or when your players have exhausted all they can think of. So this is part of prep, actually, uh, for most storytellers, uh, for me at least. Um, I'm hoping all of you have it. And the 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 funny thing is, is I actually have a brother. Uh, I have a brother. Yes, I have a brother. <laughs> My brother experienced a, he, he is uh, trying to start his own sort of, um, uh, what's the name with Matt Mercer? What's his group? Oh, uh, he's got, uh, oh, man, I'm, I'm blanking on their name. Um, but it's, it's, it's one of those, those like online YouTube yeah, storytelling. He, um, so he's, he's, they're trying to launch that with their YouTube channel. Pretty, pretty sure it's – this is shameless promoting my brother's YouTube channel, uh, Handlebar Mustache TV. So – but they've got some really good content on there. Check it out. They had a um, 
uh, a game going where essentially was it my brother or was it something I heard on a different podcast? I, I don't remember, but they were talking, what I do when creating a game is I have my guide. Okay. I have one guy who's so close to the end, he can taste it. In our red light game, which we talked to our listeners too many times about before, so I'm hoping they know the premise. It was our players investigating uh, Wendigo murdering people on a Native American reservation or Indian reservation or First Nations reservation, however you want to, uh, uh, however they prefer to be titled. Um, so I, I read a lot of articles on this because uh, there, there are ones out there that would be like, don't use Native American and they prefer Indian because uh, that has been their title for over 200 years. Now we want to take that away from them. Um, so um, the, the thing about it is, is um, on the reservation, there was a reporter and this reporter had all of the, inf I mean, like he had timelines, he had enough information that would get my players back on track should they go astray and, and pretty much didn't lead them, but got them real close to, to who it was at the end. Um, so, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. I just woke um, up from a nap. <laughs> a good nap. It was a good nap. I'm not, I, just, I won't shame myself. I'm gonna. I'm not nap shaming. <laughs> all right. I'm 34, turning 35 in a few days. So I am not nap shaming. Um, I work hard. Damn it. <laughs> um, so uh, back to uh, the the reporter. So he was my guy. I kept him in my back pocket. Now one of the things that you have to create for your guide is how do they know the players? Why do they want to help the players? Now reporters are great. They're fantastic because they're motivated by wanting to get the story out and they're usually in link or in touch with what's going on in the city. And this works for sci-fi modern or uh, medieval, you know, so Really, all three genres can use reporters because the news has been around, you know, forever. Um, exactly. the, the media, um, you know, even before the invention of the printing press. Excuse me, I'm You're sitting asleep up now. during this podcast. <laughs> no, I'm not. I promise. <laughs> Yawning's just the exchange of gases. Um, I don't know. My my body's just like need more oxygen. So. Reporters are fantastic. Uh, security forces and or police and or city guard are great. Uh, you know, they want to get to the bottom of the mystery too. If your character, if you're having characters that are playing the, the bad guys, um, you know, kind of gets a little bit harder because essentially your guide has to be money. But there are unsavory people all over the place. I mean, you can there say, are. Yeah, but typically you have to exchange something for the, for the assistance there. Exactly. They want to get money out of it. Money, gold, loot, whatever. Uh, hey, that's a nice watch. Doesn't mean your characters or your players won't beat him into a pulp to get that information out. But there's somebody who holds on to most of the keys. Okay. That is one way of doing it, the guide. Now, in this one that I recall, essentially, the players in the heat of the moment when the guide came to help them, murdered the guide. <laughs> <laughs> and and it was not good. I'm sorry. That's so apropos. Like I could I could have seen us doing that. Like if like he just came out, he just startled the players and stuff. Well, stuff. like he was he was like he was dressed up in a cloak and they just yeah, no, I it was my brother's game. I'm pretty confident. Uh and they the, the players just put a spear right through him. You know, and there went the guide. I mean, like they critted him. So shit how do i get my players back on track um so not only was one guide good two is better <laughs> so who is that person who has all of the the information who is running tandem to the players goals or can be motivated to assist the players and who would know of the players um so i make sure i have this person already established before any game even starts i know who my guide is uh, who's going to help them out in a, in a pinch because players get lost. You know, um, 
I have a saying when it comes to investigation games, uh, make your game two steps stupider. Because whatever plan that you come up with, whatever story, whatever puzzle you come up with, your brain is the only one that works like your brain. That what's, that's what makes humans such beautiful and unique creatures, um, is our brains are unique. And in that, when you have other people trying to figure out your brain, it, it, it gets very difficult. Um, so you might think like, guys, this is easy. Come on, this is child's play. But it, it, it's child's play for boating, for boating experts to do like a, a wet knot. It's not child's play for somebody who's not a boater. Uh, you know, doing knots and all sorts of stuff. So the thing about it is, is that you, it, it's easy to go awry. It's, it's easy to get lost, especially if you've built this huge map and you're like, guys, how do you not see the town of Talfa Lassahalaman? You know? Okay. Well, that, that's a mouthful. You're, you're, you're terrible at naming towns. Okay. We I am down terrible at me. towns. All right. Give me a town. Uh, the town of Kalen. All right, the town of... God damn it, that was good. <laughs> Fuck. Shit. <laughs> damn it. Um, so the town of Kalen. How did you not see the town of Kalen? Well, you, you're the one who built the map, all right? So when you were drawing in Kalen, it was very obvious to you. When we were looking at the map and noticed all the pretty, pretty trees and the, and the beautiful artwork and the beautiful script you put in there... I'm sorry that we missed the tiny backwater town of Kalen. But, um, so, how do I get my players on track? One, guides. The more, the merrier. Two, um, is, is some sort of leading clue. Now, when you are using, oh, you know what? What I want to get into before I get into leading clues is um how to introduce the guide or the leading clue you don't want the guide to get shanked when you introduce him so <laughs> don't have the guide be shanked but beyond that you want to introduce the guide in in a in a holistic way or the object in a holistic way there should be a purpose for them coming to the players because if they are literally arriving like Gandalf and just being like, hey, here's what you got to do. It's this, this, and this. You have just taken your player's victory and made it your own. Now, perhaps you're telling a high fantasy game and that jives with you. But I, I would, and again, it depends on your player group. We, we always say KYP, know your players. Um, if your player group likes being dragged, if, you, if you, your player group likes having the carrot waved in front of them and they follow the carrot then by all means have somebody show up and tell them where to go yeah okay um but if your player group likes sort of feeling like they have the agency in there then you can't have gandalf show up and be like no you gotta go to mordor <laughs> you gotta go to mordor so uh, take a left get off at uh, meridian street and before you have that, you need the uh, the seeing stone. So you've got to go over to this mountain over there. So. <laughs> got to go to Kalen. Kalen, that backwater town. Um, but Aaron brings up a good point. You uh, know your gaming group. Are you, are, do your gaming groups just like Gandalf to show up and, and point where to smash things? Um, even then, we're talking about leveling up your game. Introduce them holistically. Why does Gandalf want to show up and have them smash things? Is Gandalf secretly doing this because his ex-girlfriend made those things? I mean, it's so much cooler when you put life to it. Gandalf's ex-girlfriend. That's why he had you fuck up the pottery shop <laughs> and beat up the innkeeper who claimed he didn't know anything. It's so much cooler when your guide has their own motivations and has a reason to help the players. You know, it it, it comes down to more humanistic holistic uh outcomes um so if they do like the strong guiding hand you know this is candy land and try try to make the path as invisible as you can uh just like great video games nowadays 
uh, when you try to run off the map, like in first-person shooters, which I play, they have these beautiful ways of just making that area inaccessible. Whether or not it be a locked door or it be a, you know, vines growing over something. It's an invisible boundary. That's what it is. It's just an invisible boundary. So be respectful or, or try to find those invisible boundaries. So the guide, the object, if it is going to be an object like, okay, my guys need a map. They really need a map. Make that map a little challenging to find. The map, you don't have to worry about someone throwing a spear through the heart of the map. I, mean, I suppose <laughs> some of you probably do have the player out there who's like, I take the map and I burn it. <laughs> Sorry, it, it's interesting. At work, I uh, uh, we have a, a new employee who I found out also games. So while I was in Georgia, he and I were swapping gaming stories. He is a storyteller, and he does deal with a player who's just like, I burned the map! <laughs> Again, you go, um, go back to... Um, uh, dealing with problem up, players. Dealing with problem players. I think, I think we have an episode on that. Uh, we definitely talk about how to how to handle the, uh, the, the challenging player who's just there to burn down your games <laughs> yes we actually have a whole episode dedicated to that um so the the maps make it challenging um is there a dungeon has this map been placed in a dungeon uh are there traps containing this map for your modern style the map is in a museum how do we break into a museum they have alarms and guards and security cameras for sci-fi it's some some Imperial base has this map because it's considered a Jedi relic. Um, you know, the Klingon stole it using transporter technology. It's Make it also clear that they need to steal that map. That uh, map, yeah. Yes, or, or, or acquire that map. Again, if you make it where, where you know, the town of Kalen was so obscure and hard to find on your map, and then they need a map now to know if they need to go to Kalen, but you're making it super obscure and hard to find in this room of things. <laughs> so, like, you don't want players to just randomly miss the map that you're going to use to help them get on track. So don't make a clue harder to find than the original thread that you were trying to hope they found. <laughs> right. You know, yeah, definitely don't do that. Uh, if we're talking about puzzles, the one of the things about puzzles is, is, mind you, there are people who play Resident Evil 2, and when it said <laughs> the key is a heart-shaped key, or the hole is heart-shaped, there were people who would probably struggled being like, well, I got a heart-shaped key. How do, do I use it? Do I not use it? You will... Trust me, someone in your gaming group is that person who is like, eh, maybe? It's a heart-shaped hole. Put in the key. Again, it's not, it's not perfectly obvious to all your players. Like I said, even though like in your mind, it's just like, aha, I got it. It would be so easy, so simple to, to solve this puzzle. And then your players are going to look at it like, they're just gonna be banging the rocks together. Like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I've seen it. I have seen it. I have seen my players literally turn into into chimps and just <laughs> And like I'm like, guys, oh Christ. Christ, turn on the ignition. The Poughkeepsie the... agenda, Jared. The Poughkeepsie. Oh, it's the Poughkeepsie agenda. <laughs> you ever been to Poughkeepsie? No. <laughs> Pass. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry for any of our listeners in Poughkeepsie it, it became the butt of a joke but great town wonderful balloon festival that you guys have going there uh, <laughs> look up Poughkeepsie that's what it's known for hot air balloon festival. will do um, and uh, an inspiring name of Poughkeepsie it's just a fun name and embrace your town name if you're from Poughkeepsie um, but uh, you will have players that are knocking one of the things is also don't show your frustration because it's demoralizing to your players. It makes them feel bad because here's the thing. They are banging rocks together and it might be a freaking simple, like it's a heart shaped key for the heart door. You don't try to use the club key. There is the consigliere moment is another way that I guide my players. Now I'm about to unveil a curtain. I think for, it could be for Aaron, but it, it, 
Aaron might have been like, dude, I've, I've seen you do that for years. When I see my players struggling, I will recommend for them a conciliary moment. Be like, hey, guys, you should probably conciliary about this. Engage their friends to help them figure out the mystery. All e right. Effectively, you're telling them to go metagame. <laughs> please metagame, I need you to figure this out. Why? Because I'm not trying to rob them of the victory. I don't want to engage my guide yet. Um, you know, because the guide is so obvious to an extent. I, I want my players to have all the victory and all the fun. I want them to have 100%. I don't want anything to detract from that. I mean, the hardest thing that you're going to do as a GM, and I know that you do this every now and then with us, and sometimes you do this to be a little bit uh, mysterious, and other times you do it to assist us, which is you will like almost bl you will ask us questions, guiding questions, guiding that need questions. to be asked, and that that are that are coming out of like as though you are part of the inner circle of meta gaming people, even though you are the GM. So you're not giving us the answer, but you are giving us food for thought that can help us get to the answer. Precisely. In the concierge moment, and so I, I know I'm not unveiling a curtain to Aaron, uh, in the concierge moment, I will engage in the conversation and ask leading or guiding questions. Um, well, have you guys really thought whether or not the place was bugged? Oh my God, it was bugged! <laughs> And it feels like you came up with that. I mean, it, I never feel like like you tell us something and we're like, <laughs> God damn it, Jared, like you just ruined the whole the whole surprise. Like <laughs> how do you know you weren't recorded? Oh my god, it was bugged. You know, um, and I I I because <laughs> I don't want to take away from my players. I, I I want them really to to enjoy the moment and have the, the victory. Um so yeah, uh, the consigliere moment where have them metagame with each other and then Maybe get involved a little bit. Maybe ask you that question. You're like, because ah. here's one of the great things. They'll, they'll, you know, my players will ask me questions. Well, Jared, you know, like the the stones. I mean, are the, are the stones really that important? And I'll look at them and go, ah. you know, or I'll be like, hmm, you know, let them ponder and think, but to the same extent, give give some sort of feedback. Um, you know, just don't be like, I don't know. Give, give them just enough. You know, you know, if your mystery is a little too, if, if they're, you'll know if you've not done something well in planning and preparation to connect things, that something is probably a little ambiguous and your players, because your players are, get fixated on details that are innocuous to things. Okay. They want to know the answer to why, there are no boxes, only bags. <laughs> have we shared with our listeners that story? I, I think we remember. have. I think we did, yeah. So, um, you know what? In case there a listener just hopped onto this episode, long story short, Aaron was tracking down a horrific monster, right? And this monster lived in a suburban household. And when they went to invade said suburban household, Aaron found every piece of food in bags. There were no boxes. There were no sharp corners in this place. And he became fixated on why there were no boxes, only bags. And it has literally become a quote of our gaming group. Oh, no boxes, only bags. <laughs> why? When the answer um, was so simple, because the monster so hadn't exposed brain, and thus. And thus, he feared sharp corners. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> You know, I mean, it, it's an innocuous detail, but Aaron brings it up. Players a lot of times do get fixated on innocuous details, details that you did not expect them to get uh, involved in. So uh, you need to break that cycle. Maybe add some disruptive information. Be like, ah, guys, I'm not, I'm not sure that the uh, the bags boxes thing is really, really what you're looking for. I'm not. I, I, at, 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 at some point, you let them struggle. You let them work their way through it. But again, this is literally your players bashing rocks together, you know, chipping it up over here. And you're just like, oh, my God, is God. Barry, you face. Christ almighty. And, and you know, they're, 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 they're just, they're, they're so fixing. Again, this happens, really happens a lot in our, in our investigation games. Because one of the things that, that you do is you're building up a mystery. And your players are are like 
they want to know exactly how it happened. They want to know exactly, yes. they want to know exactly how it happened. Jared loves the mystery. Jared wants to know all the details, exactly how it happened, exactly why it happened. And usually somewhere during that night, Jared will go, we don't need to know exactly why this happened. Like you, you, you tend to figure it out, but you really want to know. You really, I want, really to know. want to know. And so I want the story. Yeah. You want the story. You want to be able to piece together the story better than like, I mean, like, like to, to the fullest, you want to be have all the little nooks and crannies and all the details. And there, and there are always, sense. there are always questions at the end of the game, which end up arising. I ask you all these questions like, what was that all about? What was this all about? What was that all? like, like, cause I want to, I want to understand kind of how you built up the mystery there and, and get, and get a better example of this. But when your players are stuck there, you know, bashing the rocks together, you got to be like, so, you don't, like Jared said, you don't want to deprive your players of the win. If they are so far off base, you might have to just be like, that's not a thing. Like, it's not that's that not a thing. <laughs> this was a red herring. Um, so, this is probably one of my, uh, one of my favorite uh, methodologies, or it's, it's just one of the more tools that I keep in the toolbox. The intentional trip. So it doesn't work very well for your puzzles. Works great for your investigations, and it works great for, you know, your, I don't know, uh, things that you have to figure out. Is the intentional trip. No serial killer is perfect. No villain no, can map every escape route. Um, once in a while, they're going to trip. And that trip is, if your players are just a little bit off, their, off the given path, a trip can sometimes bring them right back on. So, you know, he leaves behind a thumbprint. Okay, now we got to, if, if your characters are not law enforcement, now we got to break into the crime lab. Now we got to scan the thumbprint in the middle of the dark and create a cool scene. Create a great scene. We're breaking into a crime lab to solve a crime. Literally causing a crime to solve a crime. But, oh, come on, that was good. Aaron's just looking at me like that was a foul ball. <laughs> um, but you know having a trip that isn't so much i'm not saying like ah the person who's been recording you literally falls out of the vents you know but maybe they hear a rumble from the vent and they go to investigate and that person's already scooting out okay what was that rumble from the vent is somebody recording us you know what was the thumbprint? Did they leave behind, uh, you know, a specially made uh, arrow that only one blacksmith we know can make? Or we can take to a blacksmith and say, "Well, this is this isn't a this isn't a hunter's normal hunter's arrow. This is a war arrow. You're looking for an archer who served in a war. Oh well, thank God there's only three of those in the village, you know. Or oh my God, we met an archer who fought in the war. Let's go get him." I really hope that just didn't spike the audio, like, and I just <laughs> deafened our listeners. Um, so the trip, the trip, the intentional trip is great. I, I like it because, you know, it's, it can be planned. It can be placed. You can develop further scenes from it. Um, you know, a la the crime lab, breaking the crime lab, going to see a blacksmith to identify the arrow. Um, you know, or engaging one of your your player's special skills. Maybe you've got, you know, a, uh, a, a diplomat who's like, hmm, this bloody quote, quote on the wall. Yes, I recognize the writing. This is someone well-educated who took Mr. Edgar's, Professor Edgar's class on political science. I know this professor very well. We should go talk to him, you know. Because uh, that, again, uh, as we've talked about in past episodes, let your characters shine. Let their special skill set shine from time to time. Diplomats, oh my god, I cannot tell you how hard it is to let the diplomat shine. Ugh, it's like the bard. Huh. Unless he's just buffing characters, but I, I'm like the anti-buffer. I'm like, I, I, I just... Ugh. <laughs> You know, um, 
go ahead. You're about oh, to say something. Yeah, I was about to say that. Another tool for the box, and I, I think we've talked about it before, is you know have multiple outs. So if you don't want to just have the person who shows up with the information, like the reporter or somebody like that, make sure that there are so many different ways to get to the to the answer. Okay. Yeah. This comes in, this oh comes in a really big game development and game design. If you have one way to get there, then you are almost assured that you're going to need the reporter to get there. If you have five different people who could get you to the person by saying different things about it or by um, like there, any problem that you have does not have one solution unless, unless it's a puzzle sort of. Um, but even with a puzzle, so let's say you have a puzzle in a dungeon to open a door. Okay. Your players might just be like, we're going to brute force that door. open." Okay. Yes. And, and if, if they want to go that route and unless the door is like, it's too heavy to brute force open. Um, you know, let them go get, get some let, let, gunpowder. Let, yeah, let 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 them let them smash through the the dungeon doors slowly but surely. Let them figure that out because there's not. I don't think that it diminishes their fun that they didn't solve the puzzle. It might make you feel upset that they didn't solve the puzzle because you spent seventy two hours making that puzzle. Because you spent 72 hours making the damn thing. But you know what? If your players are just having a ball and they do it, like, not every dungeon needs to be so uh, elastic in that nature. But giving them the option here and there to be able to do it, I think, always gives them the way out. Because it, most things, like I said, aside from a puzzle, do not have one set way to solve them. So, like, any, any problem that you tackle in life will have multiple solutions to it. And that that just inspired me to, you know, suddenly idea. I guess the one of the basis of leading your players uh, back to the path is a gentle guiding hand, and two, um, don't force them into one path. Uh, let them role play. That is the that is what makes role playing five thousand times better than any video game that I have ever played, because I have infinite options. If we come up to our, our dungeon door, I don't have to take Mickey, and my wife's playing a lot of um, Kingdom Hearts. I don't have to take Mickey and, and jump around the jungle to go get the Emerald Key. I don't have to do that. I can go hire some dwarves. Dwarves love digging. Bam, I've got gold. I got plenty of gold. We slayed a dragon last session. Boom, here's your gold. Dig me a hole. You know, let them come up with their creative way to get to the puzzle or get through the puzzle. Let them be creative. Let them enjoy the moment. If that for them, and they all start laughing because one of your players got so upset that he literally sold his breastplate to buy seven dwarves. Okay, she's playing a lot of Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> okay, a lot. To buy seven dwarves to start digging down, let it be because your players are laughing. Your one player's frustration is now satiated, you know, and oh my God, you had a great moment because five years later, people are going to start laughing and go, do you remember that time that Tom got so ticked? He sold his golden breastplate to hire seven dwarves to mine their way through the dungeon. That's actually a really good point there, which is the end goal of what you're trying to lead them to is the dungeon's end, okay? So if they brute force their way through it, but they do it in a clever way, I, I don't think that that diminishes from the, the uh, it, it, it doesn't lose what the dungeon gave you. Because the goal, they, they worked their way to the end there. They just did it in such a weird way that you kind of have to give it to them. <laughs> you have to give it to them. I mean, it, it's, it's, and if they're doing an investigation, you know, if he's like, fuck it, I'm going to do this. Now, I'm not saying give up to like, all right, we're going to round up all the town people and start shooting in the head. Okay, avoid that. Avoid things, again, we talked about, like that are disruptive, that, you know, but it comes down to those two solid rules. Does it increase the fun? And does it increase the story? If the story of the breastplate increases that story, grab it. If the story of them rounding up civilians and starting shooting in the head does not increase the story and does not increase the fun, stop that shit. 
Yeah, know, know, know when to be flexible on the solutions and let them work through the problem that they're, they're lost on. Like I said, if, if the only way through it is, uh, we, we've always preached flexibility, and I don't even know if this is necessarily the, the correct way to do this, but if you're trying to get them to get to the answer, and the answer is at the end here, the, it doesn't really matter the path that you take to get to the answer, because the answer is what you need them to get to to get to the end of your game. Yep. So, you know, be, be flexible in letting them get to the answer. So there's a lot of ways you can do it, either more flexibility, more options to get to the end, or have a way to guide them to that answer should they be so lost and so, so out there. Yep. And, and you know, that, that really comes down to it. You got to be flexible. You got to be adaptive. And, and like Aaron said, I can't stress that enough. If you've got one way to solve this, you're going to need the guide. You're, you're, you're essentially shoehorned into using a guide. Make sure that there's at least five ways. I'm not saying there's five, but, you know, at least a three flow, solid. A flow chart helps so much with this sort of thing because the more ways that you can solve it, and if, if your players come up with a really clever way to solve the problem and to get to the answer, go, yeah. I mean, like, you might not have planned for that contingency, but you might go, that's how you can get them to the answer. They might go talk to the to the right blacksmith or something about yep. about something. They might go uh, they might go bribe a guard for something. You're like, yeah, I didn't think that they would do that, but that would give them the answer. Don't <laughs> cheat. Don't don't cheat them out of their their win. Their their clever solution to your problem might not have been what you wanted, but it is still their win. Yep. Don't cheat them out. Uh, I have a perfect example of our last game. Our last game, uh, I, I thought they were going to, my solution in my brain was they were going to pose as players and and meet the villain because the villain was at a casino, uh, was the owner of a casino, and they, that's what was going to happen. Yeah, what did my players do? They broke into her apartment, stole things of extreme sentimental value to her, and then proceeded to blackmail her for the answers. It was a good plan. And what did I do? I let the dice roll. Let that roll. Because it was my character, my players being creative and finding new ways to tackle the mystery. And it was fantastic. Did I ever stop them? Hell no. I said, guys, let, let, it, let it roll. Yeah, the more flexibility that you have in the game and the more ways you have to get to the answer, the less likely you will be that your players will get lost. Um, you're a better example of us getting lost was us in your Bergon game in France. Oh, God. Because I didn't feel like you had enough ways for us to get to the answer. I didn't. Oh, my Bergon game, I, I can wholeheartedly admit before a public audience of, you know, people. Uh, yeah, failure. That was a fail. That was a... That was, that was, that was a... Uh, a bunt that got me out at first base. And it, it, you, it, I mean, it was, it was, a, it ended the game successfully ended. We got to the end of it, but the problem with it was that uh, we did end up having to rely upon the reporter or your guy who was, who was used to, to give us the answers sort of at the end of it. And yep. um, we just didn't have any other ways through it. So if you're, again, if they're completely lost, if they just can't figure it out, if they can't come up with a solution, there are, there are tricks. Use the reporter, use the trip, use the, um, you know, make a clue available to give them the answer, um, make something that the eaves dropped on to give them the answer, um, make it seem like they can find the answer if they are lost. Keep going forward. Don't go back. Consigliere, let them metagame a little bit, you know, get, use some <laughs> of the tricks of the trade to get them to find the answer that they need to find. Um, and worst case scenario, uh, you know, bring them, bring them together, and uh, and and let them let them solve it with a different way. Do you have anything else, Karen, that you want to talk about? No, I I, I feel like we got um, a real solid solid session in. This is good. Yeah, this I'm is good. I'm happy. I'm I'm also very happy. I hope that that the the GMs listening and the players listening feel you know accomplished as well after listening to all that and have some some tricks to to take them to the next uh, to the next level to level up their gaming. Love their gaming. <laughs> Cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> but if uh 
If you want to give us feedback, uh, give us an episode suggestion, uh, tell us about an episode that you liked, uh, level up your gaming podcast at gmail.com. Uh, also, uh, subscribe, leave us a review, tell a friend, please leave us reviews, please subscribe, please tell friends, expand the audience, tell more people about the podcast, it'd be great. Um, but for Jared, I'm Aaron, have a good week, guys. Have a great week, everyone.